Good afternoon. Delighted today of this unveiling of two brand new jet skis uh, to help out on our waterways. We know that South Australians love uh, the water, whether it's along the river or in the ocean. And what we've got here are uh, two fantastic new pieces of kit uh, that are going to go a long way uh, to ensure that we reduce marine related crime, but also ensure safer waterways. Uh, we know that uh, these uh, jet skis uh, are nimble, they're fast, they can also operate not only in the sea but also uh, along the, the rivers uh, and they can also operate in shallow water compared to some of the uh, obviously the heavier boats. So we're delighted uh, this afternoon to unveil these. We know that the South Australian Police are the uh, controlling agency for search and, and rescue on our waters and they do a fantastic job. Uh, and uh, obviously with summer just around the corner, we obviously want to do everything we can as a government to support South Australia and police to make sure that we keep people safe on our waters. Uh, over the last year, I think we saw uh, over 300 marine related incidents, uh, over 150 expiations were also issued as well. So uh, with summer just around the corner, it's a, it sends a strong message uh, that South Australian police are not only going to keep people safe on land, but also on water. So we're delighted to uh, unveil these two, these two new jet skis uh, today. I think uh, total kit comes to about $50,000, but obviously it's money well spent. If you can save a life, then of course it's money well spent. Uh, so we're delighted to have these here uh, today. And what I might do is pass on to Phil from the Water Operations Unit. Thanks, thanks Minister. Um, so uh, capability, um, with our current vessels to deploy in uh, inland waterways, in uh, new coastal areas and certainly to uh, police uh, the activities of uh, personal water watercraft. Um, we find that uh, the biggest issues along the coast is uh, travelling uh, within um, 200 metres of the shore, basically between Outer Harbour and Selix Beach. Uh, there's also an exclusion zone in the Beach and Grange between the Torrance Outlet and Grange Road, where um, all watercraft, but in particular, we find that personal watercraft um, encroach at different times, and that's really for the safety of the swimmers. Um, watercraft, uh, personal watercraft, and all craft are not uh, permitted to travel more than four knots within 50 metres of a swimmer. So clearly, um, that uh, that is one of the pieces of legislation that we're really keen to get out and um, and work with. Questions, please. How, how many do you have at the moment, and, and how much does this boost your fleet? Uh, so this is um, the, our first two um, watercraft, our personal watercraft, um, to uh, add to our um, current three other vessels. We've got a, a 20 metre um, patrol vessel, a um, about an 8 metre um, craft, and also a 6 metre rib that we use uh, so particularly. I think it, um, it, it really does just uh, make um, us more capable and adaptable to, to what the job is. Um, there's no particular um, craft to use. Obviously, some of the craft uh, have got um, depth issues. Um, but in um, very shallow areas, we get quite a lot of people missing with kayaks and around there. So it, it's going to make it um, really easy for us to, to search for them in and around those um, shallow areas. Is there any further training or, or anything that's required for the people that will be using these? Yeah, so our, our um, jet skis are uh, commercially registered, so we have to reach them with AMSA. Our, our uh, staff have all done um, a training course and they're only able to be used, because they're a commercial vessel, um, a, a registered coxswain, of which all our members are, um, to uh, to use them. So yeah, a course of instruction. Um, you know, there's people in our section who've got 25 years experience in all sorts of vessels. This is just another vessel that they can use for depending on the task. Yeah, a few questions for the minister. minister on another topic. Sure. Okay. And we should also uh, note the sorts of things that they can do. So obviously they'll be uh, able to conduct uh, RBTs, drug testing, as well as well as uh, checking on boat licences as well. So, uh, minister. When you were Speaker, you uh, ordered an investigation into the conduct of Sam DeLuca uh, in court today. His lawyers want access uh, to that uh, water documentation linked to that investigation. Who holds that? Is it you or is it the Parliament? Uh, so obviously I'm not the, the Speaker now. Uh, that'll be a matter for the, uh, for the current Speaker to, speaker to obviously uh, uh, look at. Um, but obviously as it is a matter before the courts, obviously I'm quite limited in what I can say on that. So the is, actually, Parliament. Um, is actually going to be issued to the Um, gives that document freely over to the, the defence lawyers? So look, 
thanks for the question. Obviously, I'm not the speaker at the moment, and I'm sure the current speaker will look at that. I obviously haven't seen any uh, Sure, subpoena, but you'd be across but, as the former speaker, right, as I said, not, as whether a, or not a document that you um, administered and, and Obviously, as I said, look, I'm not the speaker at the moment. Uh, Josh Teague is the speaker, so I'm sure that's a matter that he will consider. Uh, but obviously, because the matter is before the court, I'm very limited in what I can talk about. Would you have a problem with that um, big report um, being handed over to the court? But as I said, obviously it is a matter for the court and I'm sure the current speaker uh, will be looking into that matter. Do you think Sam Hook should still be in Parliament? Well, look, as I said, look, uh, this is a matter before the court um, and I'm sure that uh, the court will uh, adjudicate this case uh, in, in due course. That's obviously not a matter for me, it's a matter for uh, the court to look at the case and uh, obviously because it is before the court, I'm very uh, limited in what I can talk about. Any other questions, guys? Yes, um, today was Craig Court has thrown out a red I'm aware that there was a case uh, before court at the moment and my understanding uh, of that case is that South Australian Police will be uh, looking at the finding and taking advice and considering their options from there. Like I said, I think South Australian Police, from what I've been informed, are uh, looking at the findings, considering their options, considering their advice, and I'm sure they'll have more to say about that uh, down the track. A similar issue happened a few years ago with handheld cameras and expiations had to be put on hold uh, before a law change was made. Are you expecting to have to go through a similar process in relation to, uh, to fixed cameras now? As I said, I think South Australian Police will uh, look at the findings, they'll get some advice, and uh, I'm sure they'll have more to say uh, down the track. And just back onto the Deluke investigation, you did order a company to uh, investigate, but does part, did, did the, were those documents handed back to the Parliament, or does it, is it the company that itself that still has those documents? So obviously, uh, I'm not speaker at the moment, so Josh Teague is the current speaker, uh, and uh, as I said before, I'm very limited about what I can talk about uh, when it comes to the Deluk matter for obvious, obvious reasons. Obviously, but when you were speaker, did those, in, did that document or documents or report come back to you when you were speaker? So obviously, uh, there was a report commissioned during my time as speaker. Uh, the current speaker uh, would obviously have custody of that matter and it would be up to him about uh, how that, that, uh, that issue uh, proceeds from him. So as a former speaker, can you see any issue of parliamentary privilege arising here or should parliament just hand over that, that document? Well look, obviously this is a matter for the current speaker and the parliament to look at in due course. So I okay, appreciate the interest and obviously it is a sensitive and complex issue but I'm not the speaker any, anymore. Josh Teague is the speaker. And uh, I'm sure you have uh, potentially more to say about that in the coming uh, coming week in Parliament resumes. Is that you're aware of the red light camera issue? Um, how much would it cost to test hundreds of cameras? You've obviously had to weigh out how much. How much I'm not sure it's it cost to, to test hundreds of cameras. How many uh, how many hundreds of cameras we're we talking about? Look, uh, with all respect, I appreciate the um, the sentiment. I appreciate the uh, the uh, the inquiry, but um, what I would respectfully do is just refer to my other comments. So obviously there is a case, South Australian Police will look at the case, uh, they'll take advice and I'm sure they'll have more to say uh, in the not too distant future. I don't think I can really add to that uh, at this point in time. Thanks guys. We've got some, just quickly, we've got some evidence of a, of a near head-on crash in the hills from yesterday, some vision. Um, apparently one of the drivers fell asleep at the wheel. You can see them cross over and get the other car. Any message to drivers out? Look, I haven't seen uh, that footage, but look, if it is reckless uh, behaviour on our roads, obviously it is frightening. Uh, we almost got through a long weekend uh, without any fatalities. Sadly, we lost uh, a very young motorcyclist on the weekend. It's an absolute tragedy. So, look, all I can say is uh, I would implore South Australian motorists to please be careful on our roads. Uh, all serious fatality, all serious crashes and fatalities, sorry, all fatalities and serious crashes on our roads are completely avoidable and preventable. So, please be careful on our roads. Okay.